start signing our sermons now. And we have our new uh, person doing that for us. Her name is Dasha, and she'll be signing our, our, our sermons. Uh, and we're, we're trying this out to see. So if you have any people in your neighborhood or in your family that have hearing difficulties, get them to the computer, and they'll be able to be signed the Word of God. So any, any, in the event any of them are not saved, they will have the opportunity to come to a saving knowledge. Let's give Dasha a big hand. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, what's, you, what's unique about our signing is that her mother is signing to her what I'm saying, and she is signing to you, so you get it. We, we got a threefold thing happening here with our signing. And, and the reason I'm standing here is so that you people on the Internet can see her uh, while she's sitting there. Amen? All right, so if, I, if you say, well, Pastor's standing over there like he don't want to be near us. No, I'll be over there, but I'll be back here mostly to get her because we, we don't have the technology yet so we can put her at the bottom of the screen in a little picture-in-a-picture picture thing, but we're working on that. That's soon to come, and then once that happens, we'll be back uh, like we normally are. Okay? All right, everybody ready? All right, now, let's grab our Bibles and meet me in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 7. Matthew chapter 5. Verse number seven. If you ask him why he skipped six, I gave I did verse number six when we originally started this teaching, remember? So if you didn't if you didn't get verse number six, it's on DVD and audio, and our media team will be happy to make sure you get that. Now, if you if you have Matthew chapter five, verse number seven, please stand for the reading of God's word. In Matthew chapter 5, verse number 7, the Bible reads, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You may be seated. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Our subsubject today is possessing the spirit of compassion. Possessing the spirit of compassion. As Jesus is teaching this Sermon on the Mount, like I said in previous teachings, he is preparing his disciples for things they need to do and things they need to uh, be able to contribute to society as Christians or as disciples of his. In this particular text, he wants them to understand that a disciple must, have, must be able to extend mercy. And the reason we must be able to extend mercy is because God extended mercy to us. Mercy is nothing but being compassionate. But, but, but God wants us to move past being compassionate and then demonstrate that compassionate by being merciful towards world. John 3.16 is nothing but God showing his mercy towards mankind. For God so loved the world that he was moved with compassion. And compassion that is moving makes the person compassionate do something about the need that the person has. Amen? Amen. So in this particular text, he says, bless, and we understand bless is having the favor of God and it's being able to receive preferential treatment from God. So he says in this particular text, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And anything God asks us to do, there's always a promise that is associated with the obedience connected to God's word. Blessed are the merciful. Merciful, to be compassionate, has to do with benevolence. This goes beyond light, bill, pan, and all kinds of stuff like that, okay? Benevolence, it has to do with, uh, it, it, it involves a thought that is accompanied by an action. Merciful folk are moved with compassion. That compassion is generated in them, not by themselves. Say amen to that. And that is why when you feel, when you sense yourself, wanting to meet a need that a person has, it's not you. Amen. It's the spirit of compassion, Amen. God, in you. Right. He needs you to cooperate with him yeah. because that is an opportunity he wants to portray to that person compassion to demonstrate to them the love of God. Amen. I wish I had a witness. So, so that I did not. Now, a compassionate person is never worried about being gotten over on or uh, being taken advantage of. They understand you can't take advantage of me. You can't get over on me. Even if I, if I move with compassion to help you every day I see you, I understand that it's not you. It's the passion, it's the spirit of God in me moving me to do you because the spirit of God is trying to use what he's doing through me 
to draw you. Amen. That's why the word said, let our light so shine. Amen. Light is supposed to be visible to the eye. Light is supposed to be able to be seen so people who are in darkness have a way out. Say amen to that. The church of Jesus Christ should be a body of compassionate people. A body of compassionate people. So merciful is the demonstration of compassion that is that comes out of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in a person that loves the Lord. In a person that loves the Lord. God always makes provisions amen. for my compassion to be demonstrated. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. So Jesus says, Bless. now, in these teachings that we've covered thus far, there is a spiritual principle that has been practiced from verse number one all the way to where we are now. If you do this, God will do this. If you do this, God will do that. If you do this, you'll receive this. If you do this, you receive that. There's a spiritual principle that is being rehearsed in our hearing in every one of these beatitudes, if you will, that Christ is teaching his disciples. And like I, in our early class this morning, there is nothing that God requires of us that there is not a promise attached to. Amen. Watch this now. God does not have to wait until we do what he says for the promise to be activated. We activate the promise when we do what God says. I wish I had a witness. Now, so in God, meet me in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, and I will show you what the spiritual principle is. This is a principle that's not just for believers. It's one of those principles that God wants the whole world to understand. In Galatians chapter 6, beginning at verse number 7, Paul writes to the church of Galatians. He says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's a spiritual principle. It's not just for us as believers. It's for the entire world. The principle is, first of all, God will not be made alive. Be not deceived. Don't, don't get it twisted. You cannot make God out of lie. Be not, don't get it mixed up in your head. That by doing what God says, you're going to get an opposite result of what God said. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Many times we are not compassionate because we don't like who the, who, who the Spirit of God points us to have compassion toward. Yes, yes, Say amen to that. Amen. Now, so he says then, be not deceived, God is not marked. Look, he said in the text, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So you go back to the text. If you are merciful, you will reap merciful. If you demonstrate compassion, you will reap compassion. Anything you plant grows into what you plant. Amen. You will never put a watermelon seed in the ground and get a cantaloupe. You will get a cantaloupe when you put a cantaloupe seed in the ground. Amen. Whatever a man plants, whatever a woman plants, whatever you do with your life, that is what you're going to reap. If you sow bad choices, you reap bad choices. You sow good choices, you reap good choices. So he says, be not deceived, God is not marked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In the next part of the text, verse number 8, he says, For he that soweth to his flesh, if you're selfish, if all you want to do is what makes you feel good. See, once you become a disciple, you begin to understand or you come to understanding it's not my life anymore. Amen. I wish I had a witness. Yes. So he says, he that soweth to his flesh, you do whatever you want to do because you like it, whatever you feel like you want to do because you like it. If you sow to your flesh of the flesh, you will gather corruption. It is, isn't it surprising today that many times when we read the paper, when we watch the news reports, when people are reaping bad things because they did bad things, they are really surprised. Why did this come out this way? Why did this turn out that way? You'd see that. That's why I say this particular verse is a spiritual principle. It's a law that encompasses the whole world. When you sow to your flesh, when you do what you like, when you do what you want, when you do it the way you want to, what you're going to reap is based on that. 
Remember, you can't plant a, plant a cantaloupe seed and get a watermelon. You want, if you want the things of God to be produced in your life, then you have to, re, you have to sow the things of God, and they'll be, you can reap them in your life. You see what I mean? So God, remember I said, God does not have to activate his promises when we decide to do something. We activate the promise when we do what God says. Now, now, so he says then, for, for, the, for those who sow to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Watch this now. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap what? Everlasting life. That's not salvation to go to heaven. That's all the things you will need to make this life better. Amen. To make this life better. Kind of start listing some things that you need to make life better. Then find out how you can produce that in your everyday life and whatever you sow. If you sow goodness, you're going to reap goodness. I wish I had a witness. Say me that. Everybody get that? Many times, watch this, as a disciple, it's going to be difficult for us to believe that we can sow good and reap good. Especially when sometimes we are appointed, we are appointed to and assigned to sow good to people that are doing bad. I wish I had a witness. See, that, that's where our rub is right there. But think about it. All of us was doing bad. And God had compassion. I wish I had a witness. So, and, you know, son, and a lot of us are doing bad right now. And God's still having compassion. Same in that. We didn't do everything right yesterday, but he had compassion and woke me up this morning. I didn't act all right last week, but he had compassion. I'm still here. I'm not really doing with this life he's blessed me with the best that I could do, but he still has compassion on me and keep letting me live it. I won't do this right. I won't talk right. I won't look right. I won't do anything right, God says, but his compassion is still extended towards me. So if I work for someone who's compassionate, how can I demonstrate something besides or other than compassion? So Jesus tells his disciples, you're blessed. You have the favor of God when you extend compassion because he extended compassion to you. Say amen to that. I like that. You know why? It puts God on, say it puts God on the hot seat. I never forget in my, when I was working. And uh, I may have told you this story, but it comes to mind right now. My wife told me I came home one day. I was dirty. She said, I didn't marry no man to dig ditches and look like that. I was making good money. I was doing pretty good. And so <clears throat> I went back to my supervisor. No, I did this. I had a talk with God. But when she told me that, that kind of kind of got me hot, made me hot because I was making good money. But I, I guess she could see something better in me, whatever. But anyway, so, you know, and I, I went back to, and I had a talk with God. I said, okay, this is the deal. I said, I'm going to try you for 30 days. I'm going to do what you say, the way you say it, on this job for 30 days. And I'm going to see what you do for 30 days. Now, I had to do some things in conjunction with that. Because when I, I, had to, I had to start planting different seeds. One of the seeds I had to plant was get them other dudes who didn't want to go nowhere out of my ear. Even though I had to work with them, I didn't have to be like them. See me that. Second thing I had to do was go, I went to my boss and let it be made known that I was ready for some responsibility. And so that's all I did. The next week, he gets ready to go on vacation. He says, I'm going on vacation. I need you to TAC for me. That means you, you fill in for the supervisor while he's gone. Right? I was like, dang, that was quick. That was really quick. All I did was change my desire. I hadn't really done anything yet. So he comes in. He tells me what to do. You know, and I'm like, I've never done this before. And so, uh, but but as I, as I approached it, understanding what I wanted to do, and what I was trying to accomplish, right, God just began to open doors for me. In a month's time, there were offers from all over the company trying to hire me into management. I had choices. 
in less than 30 days of where I could wanted to go. I had choices on which jobs I wanted to pick. Brother was bad. Say amen to that. And so, and so, so the, the, I looked at jobs, and they were trying to move me. I was like, man, I really, you know. So anyway, this final job came in. And uh, final job came in, and this guy, he said uh, he wanted to hire me as a supervisor in construction, which was what I did. And uh, he said he wanted me in Tampa. He said, come to Tampa. And so I talked with my boss about it. And the guy that was uh, my manager, he called me in the office one day. I was out working. He called me in the office. And this kind of guy you never really want to talk to. But he called me in the office. And th this is his exact words to me. I don't know why. But for some reason, this man wants to give you a chance at being a supervisor in Tampa. That's just what he said to me. But see, I, I don't turn over new leaves. I ain't got time to get mad at him. I'm about to get up out of here. So I, it was Friday, Friday afternoon. So I said, well, is there, I, so I'm, I'm sitting there, and the Spirit of God said, ask him if you can tell them Monday what your decision is. So I said, is there any way possible I could uh, let them know my decision Monday? Well, I don't know. You know, you got to answer them right now, or it goes well. I said, would you mind just calling HR and see what she said? Call HR. Well, he's standing here, and he wants to know. He's real. He wants to know if, if you can wait till Monday. It's, it's, he, he got weeks to make his decision. Monday's fine. His, he turned beet red. But see, now I'm in the catbird seat. I understand where I'm going. I understand what's happening. You see? So Monday I came in. I went home. I went home, and I started thinking about it. Well, first of all, word got out that I was being considered for management. Here come everybody, man, you know. When you get promoted to management, man, they could fire you real easy. And they, they could do this, and they could do that, and they could do this. And I was thinking, they also can promote me. So this is what I did. Never talk to anyone that you work with where you're going because they don't want you to go. You got to go find somebody who's in touch with God to help you decide if this is God and what you want to do. I needed that money because I was going to go talk to a fellow who had always given me solid advice on promotion. And that's the guy I went and found. And I asked him, he said, and I told him what was happening. He goes, he looked at me, he goes like, he told me the same thing I told y'all. God is always interested in promotion. That's all I need to hear. I went back Monday, and I told him, I said, would you call him and tell them that I accept the job? I cruised on over to Tampa. Now, in the meantime... I did not know what was waiting on me because I was in the reserves. I didn't know how that was going to pan out. And I, I was in school. I didn't know how that was going to pan out. I was doing a number of different things. But I got to Tampa and I sat down in my new boss's office. And uh, he said, uh, this is what I need you for. This is what he said. He says, I have no desire to supervise anybody. He said, I don't have any desire to go in a hole, watch people splice cable. I don't have no desire. He said, that's why I'm hiring you. You are my person that I want to make sure this is happening. See, now, if you show me you can't do it, then I'll send you back, and I get someone else. He said, listen, I don't need you to do the work. I need you to get them to do the work. I wish I had a witness. I'm talking to somebody. You see now, this is this is this is kind of what happened. See, it, so 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 I told him, I said, yes sir, yes sir. He said, anything we ask? I said, well, you know, I'm in the reserves. He says, not a problem. He said, I'm, I was in the Air Force too. He says, anytime you have to go to reserve duty, and one of these other managers don't want to switch with you, just let me know. Yeah. Then you know what else he said? By the way, when you have to go, just take the truck to the base. And when you come back on Sunday night, just drive it home. <laughs> God done moved the whole company policy around for a brother. I wish I had a witness. You see what I'm saying? So that I so so what 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 I am hopefully testifying to you that you would see. When you decide to sow the kinds of seeds that God tells you to sow, you activate what's already yours. I wish I, that's two people. See, you, when you start sowing the kind of seeds God wants you to sow, you don't got time to be mad at folk. You don't care if they prejudice or not. 
I don't care if you racist, be racist and sign my check. Say amen to that. I'm not going let, to let nobody because they racist stop me. Be racist and promote me. Be racist and give me my car. Be racist and give me my, be whatever you want to be. When I'm sowing the right seeds, God going to make sure you handle a brother just right. I wish I had a witness. So Jesus, so, so in other words, Jesus says, there is favor and preferential treatment available to you when you extend compassion. Say amen to that. God, I ain't got but $2. Amen. Give him the $2. I'm going to give you 200 you, <laughs> you never do or give away more than God blesses you back with. Amen. You never. never. See, our problem is we let what we see stop us from releasing it. Man, I was saving this $2 to do this. I was saving this $10 to do this. Really? You know, if God can't get $2 from you, then he can't release 2000 to you. Because if I release 2000 to you, you're going to hold on to that too. Anything I give you is only for you to be a passageway to someone else. Say amen to that. So now, now, so, 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 that's a spirit, so that's a spiritual law. That's a spirit. Now, watch it. You can help people Watch this now. Well, I ain't working. That doesn't stop you from being compassionate. Say amen to that. You know, you, there's a lot of things, more things you can do than just give money. You know, you know maybe, maybe five minutes of your most valuable time. See, that's the problem with the church today. We don't want to give no time. We're too busy. We're in the pursuit of everything, so we are too busy for God to tap into some of our time. Say amen to that. Now, 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 watch. Everybody gets 24 hours, right? Everybody gets 24 hours. But when you're doing what God wants, it seems like your 24 becomes 28 or 48. He redeems the time. Now, there's another reason why we want to be compassionate. Say amen to that. There's another reason because, because we're all going to have to stand before Christ to give an account. Don't think just because you profess Jesus, say amen to that, that you're just going to roll up in him. No, there has to be an accountability amen. for everything that you do since you accepted Christ as your Savior. Amen. Now, meet me in Romans chapter 2, verse number 6. Actually, start at verse number 5. Romans 2, verse number 5. But after thy hardness and impotent heart, Treasures unto thyself, wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Next verse. Watch this now. Why? That verse basically says, when you done done everything you want to do, you act any way you want. He says, God will render to every man according to his deeds. Amen. Heaven is not just a place we will find ourselves occupying. Heaven is associated with rewards other than just salvation and eternal life. Say amen to that. that, that everybody got scared. So bl blessed are the merciful, and then the promised part of the text is, for they, those who are merciful, shall obtain mercy. You know why I like God? Why I'm falling more and more in love with him? Say amen to that. Nothing he has for me is tied up because other folk won't do right. Thank you, Jesus, for that. We used to believe that if folk didn't act right, I couldn't get my blessing. You know, some, you, know, you know, when you are treating people right, when they are acting towards you wrong, the Bible says you are heaping hot coals on top of their head. I wish I had a witness. See, now, so the, he, he's telling them this because, right, when you are really born again, you're going to run into people who can't stand you and don't even know you. Your worst treatment is going to be inside your house. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. So, so, but when, so as a born-again person, you got to understand what you do is related to the God that's in you, yes. and he releases that compassion yes. through you because we don't have the capacity to do it ourselves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, for they shall obtain 
mercy. What does that, and I always try to find out, what does that look like in Scripture? How does God, we understand God showed me compassion when he sent Jesus, right? Say amen to that. We understand that. But is there a deeper uh, revelation that we can get from Scripture as to when I am compassionate, what God does for me in my everyday life? Say amen to that. That's what you want to know. Say amen to that. I understand the sweet by and by, I understand how that. I know, I want to know, I want to know. It's kind of like when my car gets low on gas. I want to know, and when I go, like when I go to the gas station, because my car is almost empty, and I put money in the pump, and put the nozzle in that tank, can I see my fuel gauge do this, or do I have to wait for another day? In other words, God, when I, when I, when I expend mercy, can I see the fuel gauge in my life go from empty to full? And how do you do that? And what does it look like? And what can I expect to happen from me when I demonstrate mercy? I knew y'all was going to ask that question. So, so in, meet me in Psalms 41, verse number 1. Psalms 41. This is a Psalm of David. This, is, this, is, this, I believe, is what it looks like when we extend compassion. Remember I told you earlier this morning? A lot of times, when, many times when we are studying scripture, say me to that, we look for words that explain what we wanted to explain. But many times in scripture, especially when you move to the Old Testament, you will find a different word, but it has the same meaning. That's why you have to have the spirit of God in you to give you revelation of what he's talking about. See, in this particular verses, we won't see mercy anywhere. But it is in the text because the Spirit of God is going to give us revelation how it shows up. Now, in Psalms 41, verse 1, David says, Bless, everybody understand that, right? Bless is he that considereth the poor, has mercy on the poor. Why? The Lord will deliver him in his time of trouble. When you consider other folk, in their time of trouble, say amen to that, God will consider you in your time of trouble. I wish I, see, you see what I'm saying? You are, when you sow a seed to help somebody else in trouble, you release a seed to help you out of your trouble. I wish I had a witness. <laughs> I wish I had a witness. So he says, so he says, so he says, blesses he that, what, considers. Surveys a certain person sits around. Consider why is considering the text, Pastor? Because the person you may be looking at, or the person the Spirit of God may point out to you, may not be someone you would ordinarily help. You may only want to help somebody that look like you. That's not compassion, that's prejudice. Now you racial. When you try to choose who you help, you are racial. You are a racist. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. So he says, let, let me move on, let me move on. Let me move on. I, I had the NAACP helmet. So. Check this out. Bless, bless, bless. See that? Blessed is he that considers the poor. Why? The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. So, so when I'm moved with compassion by the Spirit of God in me to help someone, say amen to that, it may cost me what I think is my last. I'm just laying up seed so when my time comes, it's going to be more. The promise I have is if I consider the poor, and consider is not just talk, think about it, it's to think about but move to some action. That's one, that's one thing, like, my, my, my wife, my, if, if I let my wife, she'll give away everything we got. She really will. She is that kind. She's actually the better part of us, because I'll shut you down. I'll shut you down. But she'll come, Ellis, so-and-so, and so-and-so, and I, and I hear the Spirit of God talking to her voice, and 
I said, all right, all right, we'll, we'll do it this one time, you know, this one, then one time I lead it two times and stuff like that. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you know, you, you need somebody like that. Yeah, I re you really do because some of us just can't hear like that. You know, you look, especially, I'm, I'm kind of like a guy, I, just, I have to get something done, get out of the way. I, the, the sob story, I done heard that story like five times, man. You ain't changed the verse, you ain't changed the sentence, you ain't changed the structure of it. You still keep coming at me the same way. The answer going, Ellis, you know, come on, really now, come on. All right. <laughs> but he says there's a, there's a blessing. Say, say, say the blessing, there's a blessing. Then look at verse number two. I can't stay there too long. Verse number two, he says, so you see the promise? He will do what? De he will de in verse number one, it says, he will deliver you in time of trouble. Watch that, watch that. He will deliver you in time of trouble. When does a believer not have trouble? When? You tell me when. Even when it's going good, there's trouble. Amen. Say amen to that. Even when everything in my life is no, nobody's bothering me or anything, there is still trouble. In other words, I am never not in a point where God can't come to my rescue. You know what my biggest rescue is? Rescuing me from me. I need him to constantly rescue me. It ain't people that's causing me problems. I'm the one that's causing myself problems. Verse number two, David says, the Lord will preserve him. I wish I had a witness. The Lord will preserve you. That, that has the idea. Preserve means uh, it has the idea of, of uh, making something or someone last longer than expected. The Lord will preserve him. Watch this. Preserve him and keep him alive. And keep him alive. I wish I had a witness. The, the Ephesians tells us, children, obey your parents in the Lord because this will give you long life. And I look around see all these children dying. Oh, oh. He says, he says, when you consider the poor, the Lord will preserve the person that does that and keep him alive. Watch this. And he shall be blessed where? I, I need to hear, I didn't hear you. Where are you going to be blessed? I, I didn't, y'all don't believe that. Where, where are you going to be blessed? You mean to tell me ain't no sweet by and by, I got to wait for it. It ain't no delayed gratification. Say a minute. If I expend mercy on earth, I reap the reward on earth. You're going to be kept alive here. You're going to be preserved here. And you are going to be blessed here. Why? God needs this world to see him blessing you. I wish I had a win. Y'all too quiet. Y'all too quiet. Say amen to that. Somebody make it up in my mouth. Okay, God, you, I hear you talking, that big talk. I'm going to put you to the test. God said, bring it on, baby. Come on. If you bad enough to try me, I'm bad enough to show you. I wish I had a witness. She says, he says, he will, per, based on the earth, he says, watch this, and thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. <laughs> Hear that? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You have to be afraid of anybody. That don't mean you act belligerent, but you understand. God, because of what you're doing for him, you get it? I hope somebody get it. You cannot sow the seed that God wants and reap opposite of the seed. So what kind of God would God be if he let your enemies cause you some problem when you're doing what he tells you to do? But we talk ourselves into it. We talk ourselves, well, you know you can't do that because of this. You know you can't, like for instance, the big thing now, Big thing now, President, one of our presidents put into action back in the 70s that churches were not allowed to speak anything about politics or anything from the pulpit, or else they would threaten to take the 501c3. So now we got everybody running. You can't say that in the pulpit because they'll take your 501c3. Really? I'm going to sow a seed of preaching the truth, and then they're going to come behind and take my 501c3. That can't happen unless I'm not preaching the truth. Right. I wish I had a witness. I wish I had a witness. But see, 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 but when you stand for God, 
Say a minute that. You can't stand scared. You have to stand minus fear in faith. I wish I had a witness. You, you can't, and you cannot be worried about what a system going to do that you're not a part of. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I always say this, if you take the 501c3, the only thing that can really happen is that God put enough folk in here for me to pay the taxes. That's the only thing that can really happen. You sure can't shut me down. But I'm going to believe God is that if I am doing what he says, if I'm sowing the kind of seeds he said, then he's going to let my enemies come and overtake me? Not according to that word. David said that won't happen. I wish I had a witness. I wish I, you don't have to be scared, man. You don't have to be fearful. You don't have to worry about if you're going to get laid off when you're doing what God says. I will, well. Verse number three, and then we got to watch it. You think that's good? So not, not, look at verse number three now. Watch this, watch this. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. When you get sick, that's sickness. Languishing is sickness. When you get sick, you can call in some favors. I wish I had a witness. All because you are sowing seeds of compassion. Then they say he'll keep preserve you, keep you alive. God ain't going to let you die when he can use you to demonstrate his word. He says the Lord will strengthen him upon his bed. And when you are sick, you really won't be sick. And then watch this. Thou, why? Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Thou will make all his bed. In other words, if you are sick, you're going to get everything and have everything you need so that your sickness won't tie you down. I wish I had a witness. All because I demonstrated compassion. That comes from a man. Now, now watch. God is not saying you got to be perfect. He said, no, you don't have to be perfect. You know why you don't have to be perfect? That's Jesus' job. Amen. He was perfect. And I don't care what anybody says, I'm riding off his perfection. I'm gambling with his money. I'm rolling his dice, and I don't care. Because every time I roll his dice, they come up seven. I'm not going to try to change the dice. I'm not going to try to change the table. I'm going to keep ro- Every time I, Jesus give me them dice again. See, y'all be trying, nah, I want to roll, I want green. I'm going to roll the same dice. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what they, I don't, I don't care. I'm going to use Jesus till I don't have to use him no more. Amen. I wish I had a witness. Say amen to that. He ain't got no witness. See, you want to buy you some more dice and, no. Ain't you, no, I'm going to use, I'm going to use him. I'm going to roll him till I don't have to roll no more. I wish I had a witness. Because every time I roll his dice, I win. Win, 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 win. Tell you now, when, you, when you've had a couple of victories, when you've had some victories on a regular basis, that job is contagious. See, we, we've talked ourselves into believing that we're not supposed to win all the time. I wish I had a witness. This ain't, this ain't like baseball or football. You, you're supposed to win every time. Every battle, you're supposed to conquer. Every enemy, you're supposed to overthrow. Every sickness, you're supposed to be healed from. Because the God you serve, there's nobody above him. Nobody can touch him. You are his representative in the earth. Say amen to that. Somebody out of you, you are his representative. If God, if Jesus came to earth and conquered everything, death, hell, and the grave, really ain't nothing for us to do but follow. There's nothing for us to do but follow. So he, he, has, he gets his disciples. Now watch this. He hadn't even gone to the cross yet. He puts all these things in place, preparing them for what's ahead. Say amen to that. If you're going to be a disciple, you need to understand, compassion is in your DNA now. Because your DNA is different. You have the spirit of God in you. Say amen to that. The spirit of God cannot disperse compassion unless he has a vessel by which to disperse it. Corinthians says we are co-laborers with God. My hands, your hands, 
our feet become instruments that God can use to bless others. I wish I had a witness. Bless others. Help others. Show compassion towards others. And when we allow the Spirit of God to use us, God says you can't lose. You can only win when you help. When you, when you become addicted to helping others, you benefit more than the ones you help. Because in order to do that, you have to lose all fear. You have to lose all prejudice, all kind of evil thoughts. Say amen to that. May send you to help the person that wronged you the worst. Because your goal then becomes to win them for Christ. Say amen to that. And after Jesus teaches them that he goes to Calvary, he lets them pierce his hands, pierce his feet, stick him in the side, put a crown of thorns on his head. All that bloodshed only solidified everything he had told them to do. Now all we had to do is just process it. Process it and do it. See? So you don't have to be afraid. As a child of God, there is favor available to you, preferential treatment available to you. And no matter what you let go, God never blesses you like for like. You give away two, you got to get a hundred. You give somebody your car, you got to get a Benz. You give away a Benz, you got to get a Rolls Royce. You can't, God does not do like for like. I wish I had a witness. Say amen to that. When the last time you, the Bible even tells us when you're praying, when you call upon him, he said, he'll show you great and mighty things that you know that of. You call him for one thing. He said, well, why are you calling for that? Yes, Let me show you what else is in the store. Yes, yes, so why you, why you calling? You didn't really call for that, but I just want you to know why you're shopping. Pick that up. Go ahead on and pick the rest of that stuff up too. Yes, I wish I had a witness. Yes. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? That ought to give somebody some hope. Let them treat you bad. Let them talk about you. Let them do anything they want to do. They, you serve God because at the end of the day, when you are standing with blessings overflowing, when you're standing with God's unbelievable character coming out of your life, they're going to want to howl in the H-E double toothpicks. They can do that after I did them there. I understand that me helping you is bigger than you bothering me. All you, the best, on your best day, you're going to lie on me. On your worst day, you're going to lie on me. If you have a mediocre day, the best you can do is lie on me. And the last time I checked, when you tell an untruth on me, I don't have to worry about an untruth. Because it's not true. I just decide. Say it in. Some, 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 somebody, you, 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 you're basing too much on how you treat your man if he act right. He ain't the key to your blessings. Your husband ain't the key to your blessings. Your wife ain't the key to your blessings. Jesus is the key to your blessings. When the last time you ever hug somebody who tried to slap you. Instead, you want to slap them back. Don't slap them. Hug them. Mess their whole day up. When they lie on you, go to them and say, you know what? Come on, let's have lunch together. Mess their whole day up. They know they done lied. You know they done lied. Go ahead and share a meal with them and tell them about the goodness of Jesus. I wish I had a witness. When you do that, God, they lied on Jesus. See, we spend too much time trying to defend nothing. The only thing, we, the only thing God asked us to defend was to defend our faith. I'm done. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand. Come on, put your hands together. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God.
Thank you, God. You may be here today. And uh, remember I told you, the greatest act of mercy God ever, or compassion God ever bestowed on the world was sending Jesus Christ. He saw our situation. He saw our circumstance. And it was all done by us. But compassion moved him not to just see our problem, but to do something about it. And he sent Jesus to down the cross for our sins. And today, if you are here and you have not accepted Christ as your Savior, I want to extend that same compassion to you. That act that God did over three plus thousand years ago is still available today. And if you are outside of Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, he wants to extend his hand to you today of compassion to invite you to become part of the family of God. Or you may be here today and you're out of fellowship with God. You may have walked away or strayed away, but his hand is still reaching out. First John 1 John 1.9 says, in order to, to, to restore, be restored back, he says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and then purify you from all unrighteousness. God is so compassionate. The only time you run out of compassion is when compassion run out. And that will never happen as long as Christ is sitting in his right hand. Or you might be here today and you want to become part of a body of believers that are trying to learn and learning how to live out this word of God in their everyday life. If that's you, will you please stand as the choir gives us a short number. If you are here and you're ready to give your life to Christ in salvation, or return to him in reconciliation, or to become a part of this body of believers. If that's you, make your way down front right now. Make your way down for salvation, Christ, restoration, or to become a part of this body of belief. Make your way down front. Anyone here today? Anyone here today? Anyone here today? Thank you so much. You may be seated. Thank you. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. To, to our internet audience, thank you so much for tuning in today. It's been a pleasure having you to watch us. And if there are any questions, concerns with the message, please give us a phone call uh, on our Facebook page or on Twitter. We'd be happy to get the answer back to you. And if these teachings are helping you uh, and since you are like part of our family here, please consider donating to us to help us continue to stay on the air to continue to share this word with you. You can do that by going to PayPal and depositing your giving there. You know, if you are a member of another church, tithe at your local church, but you want to give us an offering for that, and we'll be gladly and grateful to, to receive that. Thank you so much. Well, it's time for us to leave you today. It's been great having you with us. And as we leave you today, remember Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God bless you, and we'll look to, for you to see us at our next broadcast. Have a great day. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Put your hands together. Give the Lord.